his couch and go. It said he immediately rose before them. He took up his couch and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed. And they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. So the people that were involved in this story, first you had Jesus, then you had the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. You had the four friends who had the faith to get their friend. You had the, paraly the paralytic at himself. And then you had the crowds of people who witnessed. So you had a, a situation that God used that everybody involved could be blessed and that he was glorified before everybody. Like no matter what position you were in in that story, you could see the glory of God. And I feel like we should, when we talk to other people and as we live our lives, we should approach situations from that manner. How should we handle whatever situation we're facing in order for God to be glorified? Because what I'm seeing in this is a blueprint on how many things in life could be handled. The part of no the the importance of knowing your purpose and sticking to your purpose, because God has a purpose for whatever task He's given you. I see the importance of relationship and friendship the importance of faith, the importance of being teachable, because this was a learning opportunity for the Pharisees and teachers of the law if they had the hearts to see and understand. And so I would just like to encourage everybody, when you're reading your Bible and you're looking through scripture, to take time and not just read it quickly or just read it on a surface level, but think about what Paul told Timothy about the, what the word can do for you. And ask yourself, is it instructing? Is it rebuking? Is it, you know, what, what's the purpose of that passage? Why did God want that included? And how does he want you to utilize that scripture? How can you apply it in your life or how you can share it with others? Because many times I find myself talking to some of my friends who might not, you know, be into their Bible as much, but I'm able to listen to whatever situation they're dealing with and know that there's a person in the Bible who had a similar situation and be able to tell them their experience and how to handle it or not handle it. And that's all I have. Um, any questions, any comments? Mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. The Bible says the poor will always be with you. And I feel like it's our Christian duty, my personal opinion, to feed people and see that they're clothed and everything else is laying up. And it's been my experience that sometimes the people asking for money. They're not asking for it because they're hungry. So I think you should let the Lord lead you from person to person. Because I can say sometimes I give, sometimes I don't give. Sometimes I've seen the person I've given to a time before and they want me to give again. Like a couple Sundays ago, I got cussed out by some man I had given to before. But this particular time, I wouldn't compelled to give and you know he had a few cuss words for me had a few cuss words for me mm -hmm. yes that is did you hear what miss davis said she said you don't want to give your pearls to swine and so you need to ask god for direction on whether to give or not give. Because sometimes I feel like maybe if you don't give to them financially, 
say a prayer for them. Because even if you're, if it's not on your heart to give financially to them, everybody needs prayer. And that's something we should freely give. So I'm not saying, you know, try to put your hands on them and be like, I'm going to pray for you. But just quietly to yourself, pray, pray for them. Yes. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. It is. Mm Mm-hmm. It is. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. They didn't want the food. They wanted the money. Yes. Yes. I agree. And then the agencies have rules, they have waiting lists, they're under-resourced. They have rules and they're under-resourced. When I think about what Paul talked about in the New Testament, and I'm not even going to tell you what book it is because I can't recall it just off the top of my head, but he talked about the need for the people within the church to support each other and for churches to support other churches. That he said, basically a person's first duty was to their own house and then to the other Christians. And then, you know, it continues outward. And so I feel like, yeah. Okay, thank you. I feel like if we as Christians followed those principles, then the people who really needed help would be identified because we would be talking to them and interacting with them and having relationships with them. And you would know what they would be in need of. I can remember my great auntie at Christmas time, she would cook a whole lot of food, you know, for us, but then she would cook a whole lot of food for other people. And she would deliver it to people around the holidays just to make sure that they had. Or if people were, you know, if somebody lost their job or if she knew, you know, people were expecting a baby or other things that were happening, she would make it a point to give to those people. And if we as Christians got back to caring for our family and caring for other Christians like that, at least the house of God would be provided for. And then the worldly people, not that we shouldn't help them, But there would be more resources, like the existing resources would be there to help them. Just my thoughts. Not saying it's biblical, all of it. I'm just saying, you know, I think as Christians, we need to 
do a better job at taking care of other Christians. Because mm -hmm. God will let you know what you're supposed to do. If you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you will be guided on who to give to and where to give. That's important. I could tell a story about, I was at Walmart some years ago, maybe five years ago. And the Walmart grader was an older gentleman. And I was walking out the door and he said, be blessed. Have, not just have a blessed day, but he tells me to be blessed. It was the Walmart and Baker. So I leave and I come down Plank Road. I get to Brownsville and somebody hits my car not hits my car but not in a it's gonna tear my car up type way like they hit it and i didn't have any scratches any damages any anything and i felt like because the gentleman had taken time to tell me to be blessed and pronounce the blessing over me that helped me in that moment and I feel like as Christians, it's what Sister David said. We have to have discernment and faith and listen to the Holy Spirit so that when we're interacting with people during our day, we don't miss opportunities to pray for people, to witness them, to bless them, just, you know, to be used by God. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, Sister Franklin. And we thank all of you for your comments. Friend, helping a friend in need. I'd like to share with you our prayer list, including Rady Edwards, Major Thompson, Betty Noel, Charles Bell, Ishmael Lane, Rita Jack Lewis, Oscar Peter III, Avery Jack Jr., 
Andre Noel the senior, Deanna Verretz, Cynthia Scott, Peter Carter, Anthony Scott, Dana Tolliver, Simon Cryer, Joanne Tyler, Jesse Sewell, Nicholas Williams, Sonia Schaefer, Travis Tyler, Cal Phillips, Daisy Ross, Glenn Barnes, Jonathan Roberts, Doris Porter, Emerson Betts, Mercedes Mitchell, Eloise Stanley, the Alexandria family, Brandy Wright, Kenneth, Kenneth Williams, uh, Evelyn Fisher, uh, Anthony Hutchison, Whitney Ard, Howard Henderson, uh, Ira Baba, Cynthia Jackson, Cedric Jackson, uh, Brenda Spruill, Alicia Grant, Donna Johnson, uh, Kurt Kehara Lawson, Sophonia Wilkerson, Arthur Beals, Rachel Finley, Jerry Payne, Lena Spears, uh, Leon Porter, Kay Wallace, uh, Sonia Slack, Marilyn Charles, Don Brinkley, Audrey Hampton, Crystal Hebert, Dennis Porter, Ronald Owens, uh, Lawrence Jackson, uh, Arnold uh, Howard Torrey, Kimberly Bailey, Sean Wallace, Willie Collins, Oscar Walter, Bonnie Thomas, Frank Marino, Eileen Taylor and family, Edward Taylor, Tracy Artridge, uh, Noah Farmer, Hattie Halford, uh, Shanisha McLean, uh, Murphy Paul and family, Joanne Sumley, Ivy Ham, Alonzo and Latta Johnson, Kenneth Matthews, Mac Thomas, Anna Brown, Tony, Tonya Pierre, Rita Ross, Robert Johnson, Beverly, uh, Daryl Riley, uh, the, uh, the Dean family, Kyle Munich, Wanda Rob Johnson, Patricia Peterson, Anthony Bates, Joycelyn Harrison, Alicia Barnes, the Bell family, Selena Grant, Robert Square, Edward Joseph, and, uh, Andrew Hollis, Angela Taylor, uh, Barbara Monk, Charles Sims, Juanica Benoit, the Daniels family, Devin Daniels, Patricia Payne, Sherelle Honey, Charlene Wilson, uh, Johnny Lindo, John Knighton Jr., Carolyn Morris, uh, Shirley Poche, Kimball and Evelyn Chambers, Polly Moore, Alice Robinson, uh, Chandra Hendricks, Jackie Hicks, Leroy Jenkins, Freddie Simon, Thomas Sutton, Sharon Merriweather, Merriweather, Kevin Robinson, Ernest Cherish, Sherman Stevens, Rosa Akers, Katie Vernon. Katie Vernon was in the hospital this week, uh, had surgery. Uh, we visited with her a couple of days after the surgery. She was sitting up eating. Her daughter was with her. So keep Katie Vernon in your prayers. Mary Holiday. Uh, Preston, the Preston family, Marvel Robinson, Michael Hayes, Jamilus Francis, Louis Smith, Lois Smith, Alina Walker, Gregory Spears, James Newton, Eddie Brown, Bobby Brown and family, Marvin Crawford, Danny Shields, Char Charlie Smith, Jackie Danzy, Helen Robinson, Deborah Hildreth, Michael Parker, Jason Carter, Gloria Brown, Donna Brown, Bernice Jackson, Joyce Graham, Yvette Russ, Carolyn Washington, uh, Andrew and Brittany Betts, Debbie Joseph, Ron Willoughby, Erica Young Davis, Stephanie Clark, the Kimball family, Gilbert Carl Pepper, the Martin family, Willie Titus, Daniel Lowry, uh, Carl Weddington, Gilda Williams, Cynthia Mills, Sage Carb, Willie Broom, Clarice Blunt, Nicholas Welch, Robert Bingham, Michael Degree and Derek Smith. I understand that they're improving. Uh, Patricia Harrison, Gloria Walker, uh, Frederick Smith, Jeanette Jack, uh, Ray Henderson, Curtis Meeks, Dorothy Young, Eddie August, uh, Joanne Alcender, uh, Deanna Ellsworth, Larry and Ozana Gardner, uh, Kevon Atkins, and Joshua Bartlett. I would intercept the prayer list of uh, the grief list include uh, Brother Robert Williams, uh, nephew passed, 
they're having his funeral Saturday. Uh, so keep the Miller uh, Williams family in your prayers. Also the family of Sister Daisy Ross and uh, Sister Mustaful and Talton and Sally Jackson family. Are there others? Uh, do we have praise reports that you'd like to share? Thank you all so much for praying for the Kimball family. John and Matt Kimball informed me that wow, they're amputating more of his leg off on Thursday of this week. He already has had both legs amputated, no toe. And they are amazed that he has been getting around without a wheelchair, without a walker, without a cane. And his sister, Shirley Mae Kimball, is going through radiation now for lung cancer, and in 2014, she had breast cancer that she was healed from. And she is strong in the Lord. And she said, Cousin Bernay, I'm telling you, God is able. So thank you all for continuing to pray for the Kimball family. Thank you, sister. Sister, hello. Mm -hmm. uh, Jonathan Johnson, great nephew of Sister Lowe, is in ICU. Keep Jonathan Johnson in your prayers. Are there others? If none, others, then Sister Peters, do you have a report? Uh, good morning. Can you hear me, Dick and David? Yes, I can. Oh, all right. Uh, thank you, Deacon Davis. Thank you, Sister Rosalyn Franklin, for the review of the lesson this morning. And uh, good morning to all of my sisters and brothers on the line. It's a beautiful first Sunday of the month. And let's be, praise God for allowing us to be here and be with it. Uh, thanks to all the sisters who met on Friday night for our in person sister meeting. Thank you. Our sister brunch will be held on Saturday. April 13th, they are at the church from 10 o'clock a.m. to 12 noon in the fellowship hall. Deacon Brenda Moncrief will be our speaker. Then the next day, which is Sunday, second Sunday, we will have our Women's Day program uh, during the 10.45 a.m. service. Our guest speaker will be Dr. Mary, Reverend Dr. Mary Moss of St. Alma Baptist Church. Women are asked to dress in white with shades of purple. And please invite others to attend. Our Great Mount Carmel Christian Education Leadership School will be held at the church Tuesday through Thursday, April 16th through 18th, from 6 o'clock p.m. to 9 o'clock p.m. A flyer was sent out to you the afternoon that you get registered by uh, April 10th for the Christian Education Leadership School. This is the same today, Saturday, April 27th. 2004, but we will be hosting the Louisiana State Convention Women's Auxiliary Regional Conference right at the church. So we're the host church. We're expecting you to wholeheartedly support the conference. Please be in attendance. The K. Edward Papillon Foundation Scholarship application may be picked up in the office. Uh, if you have questions, please contact Mr. Lada Sanford at 225 650 9997. Uh, there's still Girl Scout cookies for sale, so please help the Girl Scout uh, continue and to sell all of this cookies. They have said that they have 13 boxes of toasting, 7 boxes of peanut butter clams, 16 boxes of peanut butter patties, so please help. For further information, please contact Sister Linda Harris at 225 931. 2034, Arthur Carolyn Grove at 225-284-7274. Please help. Uh, Pastor Lowe has asked that you uh, be in prayer for the sermon this morning and to read Isaiah 40 in preparation for his sermon. Vacation Bible School will resume June 10th through 14th, 2024. If you'd like to work with Vacation Bible School, Please 
remain briefly at the church next Sunday for our meeting to help with Bible school. Thank you, my sisters and brothers. And we have only two birthdays recorded for this month, for this week, for the month of April. So happy birthday to Brother Lamarcus Gilmore. Today, April 7th. And happy birthday to Sister Jordan Jones. Birthday is Wednesday, April 10th. That's, those are the birthdays for the week. No anniversaries this week. But you all be blessed. And let's all come out to church to enjoy each other and to enjoy the sermon and to be blessed by Thank you. Have a great morning. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Peters. Uh, Brother Pastor, do you have some comments? Just good morning, everyone, and thank you for a wonderful Sunday School lesson this morning, Sister Franklin, and to all of you, we do pray and trust that you'll be blessed by the lesson. We want to ask you to continue to pray, to pray for all of those that are on our uh, prayer list. It is vital that we lift their names and that we would ask that God's will be done above them, both physically and spiritually. And so let us be mindful of all of the announcements that was placed in your hearing, and let us prepare our hearts and minds today for our worship service. To God be the glory. Thank you, Brother Pastor. We thank you, all of you, for sharing with us. Our lesson for next Sunday will come from Luke, the seventh chapter, verses one through 10. Luke seven, verses one through 10. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come before you to worship you and to praise you and to glorify you. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here this morning to witness your word. We thank you for our teachers. We pray that you might continue to anoint them with the wisdom and knowledge they need to share with us. And we thank you for your churches everywhere. We thank you for our pastors and our teachers. We thank you that you placed us in the communities where we are, that we might minister to those in need. And Lord, we lift up many among us that are sick, bereaved, in trouble, and have lost their way. We pray, Lord, through your spirit, directing your people to share this message and to heal and touch lives as we go from day to day. We lift up our children before you. Pray that you might guide them, help them to know that they too have a charge to keep and a God to glorify. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I want to remind everyone that we begin this Sunday, we're going to take up collections for Sunday school. Brother Jack has agreed to lead that from Brother Jack. is going to have a, a trade to pass around for Sunday school collection. Thank you.